Um, I didn't really want to present today. I just wanted to kind of answer some some questions. So, um, so thank everybody for uh, throwing some stuff out there. Um, oh yeah, yeah. Please, if you have got questions, drop them in the chat. Or if uh, Robert, you want people to interrupt, that's up to you. Yeah, well, you can drop them in the chat, and if we don't get that get to them, um, I will answer them later. Send an email or send a video out. You know, and you know, one of the things that uh, that we do is we've got this new series called uh, uh, "Don't Think, Listen," which is really just about social listening. So, if you guys have a question, then it would be great to know what that is, so that I can kind of use that for our own content marketing. But the first thing to do when you start thinking about video, anybody know? Call Robert Weiss. Is, <laughs> is to forget about video, right? It's really about your, your business strategy first, and that's going to drive all the other things about video. And when we start thinking about video, we think about the strategy first, we think about the distribution, and then that's when we really start thinking about the content, about what we're, what we're seeing uh, in the video itself. So that's the first thing. So now to some of the questions that, uh, that, that we've gotten. And, and the first one is, um, a, about explainer videos. You know, what are the most effective types of explainer videos? And, um, you know, if I wanted a one minute explainer video about my company's services, what makes us different? Should it be a uh, animation or a real person? So you tell me, right? If you have a professional service, which pretty much we all are, who would, or what would you rather see on camera explaining that and communicating, right? Would you want a person or do you want a character, right? I think you all know what the answer is. Characters are, are great for, um, well, I don't know if characters are great, but uh, explainer videos can use motion graphics and animation for software as a service, things of that nature but you can make an explainer video with a person. Um, you can use motion graphics. You can use icons and images. Um, explainer videos are not just characters, right? Because we all explain things every single day when we're taking people into and through the sales process and we don't have characters doing that, right? We use PowerPoint slides that have charts and graphs uh, we have brochures and we use ourselves uh, to explain things. So think about that when, you know, you're thinking about your next explainer video. How do you make people feel at ease in front of the camera uh, so they don't come across awkward or they don't know what they're talking about? And quite frankly, that's, that's the secret sauce there. Uh, video production is a professional service, right? The only thing that we use in a professional service that is, you know, the, the, the tools and the equipment is, is the cameras and equipment to execute that professional service. But part of the professional service is working with somebody on the strategy, on the messaging, and then coaching them in front of the camera to make sure they are not awkward and tentative, to really make them be as they are on a call like this, or like you all are in front of people every single day of the week. So uh, we get this a lot. Oh, I, I'm gonna write a script. And we're like, stop, you know, do not write a script because you're not an actor, you know, you're you're a professional. And with some pre-production, right? So we can nail down the messaging ahead of time. Our professional service helps you say things to be ease, to be natural. So you can get that very you know, good, concise, effective video uh, that is just a business communication 
to achieve your specific objective. What is the ideal length of a video, All right? Everybody, again, these are just some common questions that have been coming up over the years. Well, the golden rule is never make a video longer than it has to be, All right? Makes sense, right? A uh, video that is in the middle of the sales funnel that talks about your three-step process is going to be, you know, so long. But if you had a video that was about a seven step process, guess which one is going to be longer, right? The seven step one. But if somebody is going to purchase a $100,000, $300,000, maybe even $50,000 less, they're going to take the time to understand your seven step process because they wanna be informed. So, when you think about the length of a video, think about the business objective. Top of the funnel is going to be a lot shorter than middle of the funnel. And think about training or recruitment. Those things come after the sale is made. Those are videos, right? Those could be a lot longer because now you're training somebody on something. So think about the business objective the distribution channel that it's going in, and that should drive the length of your video, i.e. the content of your video. And if I can just double down on the slide for a second, uh, social media, again, social media distribution, those should be short, top of the funnel. Training is after the sale, those can be long. You know, And those are just two very, very kind of disparate examples, and there's everything in between. How has your approach to content and the way you produce videos changed since the pandemic? So for yes fans, the answer is yes. And the answer is no. The answer is no, because we still follow the business objectives. Remember the first slide is the first thing to do when you start thinking about video is to forget about video. What is your business objective? If you did not have video, you would be creating images and different types of content for these very distinct types of objectives that you have on screen here. Video is the same way. So you think about a plan for video and integrate the right piece of content for the right place at the right time. And that has not changed. But what has changed is we're doing a lot more remote video nowadays. We have been on site um, recently, but that has been few and far between. So what we're doing is we're utilizing a software application to give somebody a session ID uh, by using smartphones. And then we'll log in on the software side and we'll be able to go through the same professional service of pre-production planning, locking down the message, coaching and shooting, and then utilizing that footage to professionally edit stuff. How much does a video cost, right? Or what makes up the cost of a video? This, everybody asks this. That's usually the first question that most people ask when they're buying something that they have never bought before. And in most cases, people have never bought video. So I've got two examples here that are varying degrees. And um, the first one is a, a lower level production, which you have one location, uh, two cameras, a staff of two people, and you're doing some motion graphics there. Not at a very high level, kind of we'll call it motion graphics light. And the other example, you have three locations. You have four sets of cameras and equipment. You have a lot more staff and you're using a much higher level of cameras and equipment. So the amount of effort that goes in to creating the $50,000 video is a lot more intense than the $5,000 video. P.S. You could probably get the same video from a messaging standpoint but the $50,000 is gonna look a lot 
better than the $5,000 just because of the amount of time, cameras and equipment that we're using to execute on that vision. Robert, you have, uh, you're at uh, uh, 11 minutes. Yep, we got just a couple um, more slides here. Actually, absolutely. probably two more slides. A okay. Okay. So, and, and lastly, here's something that you might not know about the return on investment of video. And this is not every single video, but a lot of video here. It has a long return on investment horizon. So even though you're investing in that video or, or it could be multiple videos, because we can create five or six videos within one production, you'll be investing in that today, but the value of that will go up over time because you can use that in many different channels uh, and, and increase your digital footprint, um, especially if they're, they're sales videos. And if you follow me on LinkedIn, we're using this month, we're calling it Old School October, and we're actually using videos from 2014 and before. Uh, we have a video from 2011 today that we're posting that, um, that we're using like over and over again. And some of those questions are, how long should a video be? We were asked that in 2011 and people are still asking that today. So that's all I got. Thank you for listening. All right, we had, a, we had one question um, from Alan. Uh, Robert, what is the uh, software you use for remote? It's called, uh, I'll give this back to you, Michael. Uh, it's called Remote Video Capture. Um, and there's, uh, if you go onto our website, there's uh, an explainer video and, and nine examples. Alan, I can pop you a link or pop everybody a link to check Yeah, out. I think the reason I asked that is just, that's like, you know, everybody's very concerned about uh, they're going to make this investment. They want to make sure that there's some, you know, the, when they're getting back is the same quality they would get if you had a camera in a room. Yeah. I mean, without jumping into it, um, it, it's, it's pretty good. We've got, if I sent you a link, I'll send you a link to a video that um, if I didn't tell you it was remote, you wouldn't believe it was from 1500 miles away. It's, it's, it's pretty good. I Audrey, think. you have a question? Yeah, I have a question. Okay, so you know I'm an attorney. So from my perspective, I'm curious, A, who writes the script and B, who reviews the script for legal compliance? Um, well, what we would do again, not have a script, right? Um, we would make sure that you are staying within the parameters of that legal compliance. Right? If it's written on your website, mm -hmm. right? if you would say something to somebody, um, that's what we would stay within. Right? Now, there might be, like you're, you're the lawyer here, there might be some use cases where that does need to um, follow through with compliance, but we would, again, stay within that parameters of shooting. And then once the video is done, we would have that go through compliance. Wouldn't it be better to do the compliance beforehand to avoid to having to go back and change or fix or edit after? Um, you could certainly you could certainly do that, but again, you say the word script, and we we Loosely. don't want things to be <laughs> scripted, right? So you know, it, it, scripted means that you're following an exact something written, and, and every single time over the last ten years that somebody has walked in with a script, it's been a dismal failure. Well, okay, call it talking points. You know, that, you know, I like talking points rather than script, honestly, mm -hmm. <clears throat> because it gives you more of a, oh, sorry. It gives you more of an opportunity to Correct. be more open. Yep, exactly. But you stay within yeah. those talking points. And that's the whole point is when you stay within those talking point parameters, you're not falling outside. Well, who determines those? I guess that's what I want to know. Is it you guys? Is it the client? Is it the two of you together? <clears throat> yes, it usually starts with the business messaging from the client. And then again, that's where some of the professional services comes in 
to make sure that those things are, are honed and, and focused and succinct. All right. Uh, thank you. We're, we're out of time on the 15 minutes. Um, there were two other questions um, from Angela and Jason. Um, Robert, I would uh, encourage you to, to um, copy those down and, and follow yep. up. Okay. Thank you. Wonderful. Um, so we're at the 20 minute point. So it's 1120. I think we have enough time for two minutes for each person. Um, and I will time you at two minutes. Um, we'll start with based on the, uh, on when people arrive, uh, uh, arrived. So Alan, Mark, Victor, then Jason, um, Alan, you can hold on. Don't start yet. I'm going to put you in speaker view. Okay, Alan, take it away. Okay, well, thanks, uh, Michael and Robert. Enjoyed the presentation. Um, so I am the um, co-founder of Sales and Winnicott Communications. We started as a uh, boutique PR firm almost 20 years ago. But as things have evolved, we are still a PR firm. People still want earned PR. They still want those articles and those news stories. But our scope of services has broadened considerably. Social media is a huge part of our business now. We manage social for most of our clients. We do paid content. Uh, we do a lot of B2B work with clients, getting them speaking engagements, byline articles. So we're really a marketing company at this point with a focus on PR and social media. And our core businesses are entertainment and media, everything from TV to digital content, uh, books, music. Uh, and we also have a focus on content for children and families, children of all ages from preschool all the way on up. And that's, a, that's us in a nutshell. Wonderful. Okay. Um, any and best leads for you? If I missed it, I'm sorry because I was no. actually. Uh, no, actually, thank you. Uh, no, best leads for us. We work with a lot of uh, startups, entrepreneurs, especially in people who are developing digital content, apps, that sort, of, that sort of thing. We also work with a lot of production companies, particularly animation studios. Um, there's a lot of animation studios that have made a living doing work for hire that are now rolling out original content, especially in this market. Um, and that's, a, that's, if you know anybody uh, who is developing original content, send them our way. Very cool. Okay, so I put in the chat the order. Um, so uh, I didn't get through everybody's name, but uh, it would be uh, Mark, then Victor Lee, then Jason Kramer. Hi, I'm Mark Tebow. I'm with Growth Strategy Advisors. And essentially what we do is we help people enter new markets and enter new target audiences. So how we do that is basically through market trending, due diligence, everything that's up front prior to branding. So we do positioning, you know, we'll do quantitative and qualitative market analysis, and we'll go out and talk to people. And ultimately what we do is we present to the client a, um, a way to, uh, you know, uh, we basically present them with a proposal. You should do this, you should not do this. With private equity groups, it's very often they've already made a decision on somebody they want to buy, and uh, we're either justifying it or not. Um, but basically, that's more or less what we do. Um, sometimes that leads to some customer experience work, and uh, in fact, frequently it does, and also market segmentation. And so it's actually pretty interesting. Um, my my ideal client, it depends. It's one of two things. It's either for private clients, it's either CPAs and attorneys, and for private equity groups, of course, having other private equity groups. I've actually been speaking to Rochelle, and she keeps telling me I should do a story. And I think after the move, I think I'm actually going to do that. Because when I look back, the thread of my career has pretty much uh, gone this way from the very beginning. It's sort of a interesting thing, you know, going from uh, direct marketing all the way through now to strategic. So that's it. Thank you, Mark. Um, Victor, Jason Kramer, then Audrey. Thanks, Michael. Um, and thanks, Robert. Thank you. You know, I think that that was a great, great presentation. Um, so, you know, we're looking for people who are working from home and who need a fast and a secure internet connection. Um, which seems to be just about everybody these days, hopefully. Um, so we've developed a basically a, a super hotspot app where you access the internet for your laptop through your phone. 
instead of residential Wi-Fi because it's often you know clogged if you've got lots of people in your household who are trying to access the internet or trying to be on Zoom calls all day. And also, you know, if everybody in your neighborhood is trying to upgrade their uh, their ISPs all at once, so it's fairly straightforward. Um, we're particularly interested in law firms, in IT firms, um, you know, because they can resell it to their customers. You know, IT firms, obviously, uh, law firms, obviously, because they're very concerned about security, and and that also includes healthcare companies because we're basically HIPAA compliant, uh, and also financial services because you know they're also concerned about security as well. So basically speed and security are the key touch points of our app. And I have to say this group has been terrific in helping us get the word out there. Um, so for example, you know, Jason and Keith uh, have sent some really terrific uh, connections our way that I'm, I'm currently chasing. Uh, and I've got Michael and Audrey who are certainly currently testing it you know, for themselves. Um, so any, uh, anybody who's interested in being a guinea pig or has some interesting ideas, it would be great. Uh, I've also had some terrific conversation with Mark and with Kristen about this. And I think Mark, you know, once you're back in action after you've moved, you know, would love to, uh, you know, ha have some more conversations with you as well. So I think the group has been terrific. It's a very straightforward product and we'd be happy to chat with anybody about it. Uh, thanks Victor, a lot. What's, what's the website, Victor, for your app? Um, it's called fetch.teleapp.com. Uh, Jason, why don't we connect? Okay. And I can, I can, I can, uh, I can talk with you more I about it. Email it to me. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be great. Thanks, Jason. Okay. Thank you, Victor, Jason Kramer, Audrey, and then uh, Chelsea. Thanks, Michael. Uh, Robert, uh, just a testament. I, I've worked with Robert. I uh, used that app before. I've known Rob, Robert for uh, Robert, Robert for <laughs> a decade now, at least. Right. I think um, so. Everything he's saying is uh, he, he's the man when it comes to video. So good job. Um, so Jason Kramer at Cultivize. Uh, Cultivize, we help companies um, solve a fundamental issue that most businesses have, and that is leads that they're spending a lot of money and time on to generate slip through the cracks. And the reason they slip through the cracks is that they don't have a process and a system in place to nurture and educate their leads. Uh, the nature of everybody's business on today's call, um, it's fair to assume that the sales cycle is going to be a few months to maybe even a year or more. And we help nurture and educate people through that buyer's journey. Um, we do this with a platform called SharpSpring, which is a leading CRM marketing automation and sales tool, where we can provide consulting for other platforms as well. A best fit for us is a company that is either direct to consumer or B2B with a sales team of two to 50 people and are generally spending north of $30,000 a year on inbound marketing. Um, referral partners would be sales trainers and business consultants and the like. Thank you. Okay, wonderful. Um, and uh, Jason gave the uh, uh, the showcase last week. And uh, if you want to see it, if you didn't see it, you can um, uh, see it on our YouTube channel. Uh, it was also I also posted it the direct link uh, in our last email. Okay, so that was Jason. So it's Audrey, Chelsea, then Larry Joseph. Hi, I'm Audrey Clover Dictor. I'm an attorney and I focus on advertising, marketing, promotions law, privacy law, and intellectual property law. And I work with small and medium businesses and agencies um, and startups, entrepreneurs to be legally compliant with their marketing, their privacy issues, and their IP particularly when it comes to their advertising campaigns. So I like to work with the creatives to help make sure that before you launch publicly that things are legally com um, compliant in order to try to avoid lawsuits for false and misleading advertising or IP infringement, whether it be because somebody infringed on your client or somebody took your client's things or the client downloaded the wrong information somewhere without permission. Um, and of course, if you have a website, it needs to be compliant with ADA um, issues and privacy issues. And remember, it's always about who is looking at your website on the other side. It's not about you or and it's also about what's on your website can you support what's on your website and that's becoming more and more of an issue so if you are for example robert you said you know you rely on websites well you need to make sure that the content on the website is correct and that it can be supported before you do the video because you don't want to have to go back and fix 
the website and then have to fix that video. So that's why I was asking about the compliance issues. Better to do it beforehand, right? So if you know the website is compliant, then you can rely on it. But if you don't know that the website is compliant, then how do you know you can rely on it? Just a week for thought. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, Audrey has been a consistent attendee at this, uh, uh, at our meetings. Okay. Um, oh, by the way, uh, if I mute you, it's only because I'm uh, trying to prevent the switch over of the, uh, the video should something, you know, your phone ring or something. So it's not because I necessarily hear anything in the background. Okay. So um, it would be Chelsea, then Larry, then Peter Nimi. Chelsea, you are up and welcome to your first meeting, right? All right, yeah, hi guys, how are you? Thanks for having me. Um, for those of you who uh, I haven't met before, I'm Chelsea Pendock and I am a media buyer and the uh, managing partner of InnoVision Advertising. Uh, we are an advertising agency that specializes in local advertising across all US markets. Uh, we handle both digital and traditional media, and our clients are primarily small to mid-sized companies, um, both B2B and B2C. And um, basically our clients will turn to us to do the media research for everyone, um, to do the campaign strategy, and then we negotiate the rates with the media to ensure our clients are getting the best placement and the lowest rates and added value for their campaigns. Um, we've been in business for 10 years this year, um, and that's me, Chelsea Pendock, InnoVision Advertising. Wonderful. Welcome. So uh, Chelsea is one of the few members of the group that uh, specialize in advertising, um, so it's great to have you here. Um, okay. Uh, let's see. That was Chelsea. Now, Larry, Peter Nimi, and then Ro oh, Robert, you've already gone. After that, it would be Keith Reynolds. Hi everybody, I'm Larry Joseph. My company is Takeoff Products. I am a longtime provider of branded marketing collateral to businesses. Basically, I provide anything that they need to help them promote what they do. It could be print, packaging, promotional products, which is really my largest growth area in recent years. And uh, you know, I kind of use my longtime experience in those industries to help guide them as to what products they need to promote what they do to their clients. Um, we currently have a, if, if any of you or your clients are looking to do some holiday uh, promotions for the end of the year, I have a, I think it's about a 50 page or 40 page uh, catalog out now that I'd be happy to send to you to, to peruse. Uh, this is, I don't want to be branded as a guy who just shows items, but this just can't hit my desk. This is from Zippo. This is a hand warmer and power bank. And it's amazing. I love this thing. Um, we live in an 18th century farmhouse here, and it does get chilly in the, in the winter, even in, what's in the 50s. So when my hands get cold, this is this is terrific item. So be happy to help you out with any of uh, your client needs. I'm looking for you know CEOs, CMOs, marketing people. That's uh, that they would be my best contacts. Thanks very much. Thank you. Actually, I know somebody else is in the business, and he's doing a lot of um, sort of. Uh, gift packs or, or like, um, I think it's related to remote um, conferences and they're sending people out these packs of, of goodies. I have a couple of clients doing that with me and I also have a back to work and work from home catalog as well. Very cool. Thank you very much, Larry. Okay. Um, Peter, Nimi, and then um, Keith Reynolds, then Jason Gardner. Peter, you on? Peter skipped out. Oh, Peter skipped out. Right. Okay. Peter had to skip. All right. So if Peter's gone, then it would be Keith, Jason Gardner, Kristen Hyland. Is did uh, Jason Gardner leave too? No, Keith, are you there? Keith, are you on mute? Let's see if he's still there. Oh wait, I see Keith, but he's still on mute. Go off mute, Keith. One second, he says. Who's the old guy behind him? Yeah. It's Uncle Robert. I, sorry, I have no keyboard this morning. My my message on my Mac was your keyboard's out of batteries. So I'm figuring out how to do everything with no keyboard this morning. 
touch. Go ahead, you're on. Thank you. I'm, I'm Keith Reynolds and I'm founder of Publio. We're a content strategy company. Uh, I have been driving traffic to websites and building the strategy around a website uh, since 1995. Um, about 10 years ago, I started a blog, taught myself WordPress uh, for a startup I was working with and got discovered by the Homeland Security Committee of Congress. And uh, our company ended up submitting testimony to Congress. And that led to uh, meetings out at Sandia National Laboratory. And the whole idea of content marketing, inbound marketing, uh, really sort of uh, started my, my trajectory upwards on doing uh, inbound marketing and content strategy and the whole movement to SEO um, and prominence of SEO, you know, really dovetails with that. About a year ago, I wrote a book called The New Content Culture and I boiled uh, down content strategy from a planning and visioning standpoint to seven buckets. You have to have a big idea, you have to have an editorial strategy, an editorial calendar, you have to have promotion, uh, and distribution of your uh, media. You have to have community and events you have to be part of it. Uh, not only do you take content out to an event, but it's also a great source of content. Marketing automation, a sales model and sales enablement, and then an ROI model. And those are the things that a, an executive can use to make an investment in the way that Rob was talking about. I, by the way, have been a customer of Rob's. You can see one of his uh, videos in our, our blog on our website. Phenomenal tool, uh, really, really helpful. Um, and I also a customer of Jason Kramer's. So this group has just been a, a really great uh, place for me to meet people and to collaborate. Uh, Victor, you as well, thanks for the shout out. Um, and if you know somebody who uh, would like a comprehensive look at their content strategy, uh, I'd be happy to give an hour consultation and uh, provide my two cents. Thanks. Wonderful. I hope your hour is worth more than two cents. Okay. Jason Gardner, Kristen Hyland, Brian Rudolph. In fact, I know it's worth a lot more than two cents, so take advantage of it. Thanks. Hey, everyone. It's Jason Gardner. I'm calling to you from Paris, France. I'm American. I've been here about four years, and I'm a photographer, and I'm a strategic photographer a lot for business. So what that means is when my clients don't have great agency or consultants like you guys, um, I help to figure them to figure out to photograph the why, not just the what, right? So it's a lot of what Robert was talking about, the strategy, uh, figuring out what the messaging is before you even turn on any cameras. Um, what that translates to, I shoot a lot of um, print advertising campaigns, social media campaigns, generating a lot of marketing material for multi-platform. Um, and that can be portraits, that can be kind of lifestyle images, that kind of thing. Um, so separately, I'm doing a lot of uh, publishing work. I've published my own book and another book, and I'm working on book number three. When I said another book, I, I worked on someone else's project. So um, my two asks in general, since I'm here in Paris and not going to be getting back to the States anytime soon, is if you know international companies who need to do stuff, um, both photographically and otherwise, in Europe, and need a, a man on the ground, um, it might be a conversation there. So I want to be the sort of different person in the room. And secondly, um, photography book publishing leads. Um, I have a decent handle on Europe, but I'll probably need to pitch some American companies. I'm a little bit out of sync of what's happening on the American side. So anyone who, a uh, good contact for me would be um, uh, someone at a book publishing company primarily focusing on photography books or someone at an international company who needs some things done in Europe. Uh, awesome to connect with you guys. And uh, thanks for Michael to put it together and Robert to get some good info on the presentation. Do we get to hear some of your Jason's, French? I can answer Jason's question. It's a mess here in America right now. <laughs> Don't want to get political. What's that? But What's that? It's, it's a, a mess. mess here in America right now. Oh, no, I, I know. I, I, I pay attention for sure. Um, it's not so pretty here in France, but a little bit better. Yeah. Very cool. Okay. Uh, that was Jason Gardner, uh, photographer, Kristen Hyland, Brian Rudolph, Angela Kaysen, and then Jason Cement. Kristen, you still here? You may be on mute. Kristen, you're on mute. Rookie mistake. Hi, everyone. Um, I am a um, 
corporate communications practitioner um, with an expertise in high tech and network connectivity providers. Um, I'm currently consulting um, for a SaaS startup and, um, uh, and also a nonprofit in the uh, oceanography and scuba diving arena. And um, my typical, um, typically I'm brought in to companies that are looking at uh, a major reorganization or rebranding, or in the case of a startup, um, soup to nuts, everything as far as strategy and branding and what does everything look like. Um, and um, I, my clients typically on the startup side are the founders or the investors. On the corporate side, it's um, the executive directors of marketing or communications or um, a specific C-level executive. Very cool. Um, okay, uh, that was Kristen Hyland, Brian Rudolph, Angela Case, and Jason Cement. So Brian, you're up. All right, thank you. Uh, so my name is Brian Rudolph. I am a digital marketing and digital transformation consultant. Uh, my background is uh, building digital marketing centers of excellence, Coca-Cola, AT&T, Verifone, um, so some pretty, uh, you know, top companies. And then I branched out to running an ad agency and becoming an independent consultant. Um, so best, you know, the best contacts for me on the um, mid to global enterprise side are companies that are in the midst of a digital transformation or need to build a digital marketing center of excellence to support a widely distributed marketing team, whether that is um, regional or product-based or acquisition-based. Um, creating that center of excellence is usually a key transformation uh, for those companies, and on the small to mid on the small to mid size side, I'm looking for people that want to just stop randomly marketing, stop throwing tactics at a wall to see what sticks, and actually put together a digital marketing strategy and a playbook that will help them focus their efforts and drive some revenue. And that's me. Great. So Brian, you started off by saying your background is in digital marketing. It looks like your background is galactic. <laughs> yeah, I, that's actually the second comment today that I've gotten on on my background. It is just a default Zoom background. <laughs> so <laughs> that's great. Okay, uh, Angela, then Jason Cement, and then I will go. Thank you. Nice to see everybody. I'm Angela Kaysen with Tempo Strategic. Now in our tenth year. When did that happen? Um, we do campaign strategy, creative and digital, paid digital advertising. And my biggest clients would be Yale Summer Session and Yale School of Management. My passion is working at the intersection of creative and data. And what I mean by that is um, I had a client who was a vintage watch seller and he said, I wanna get people to call me. So we did an email campaign for him because he had a pretty robust list and he wanted to get it out. And the open rate was great. The open rate was 40%, but nobody called. So we said, okay, maybe people don't want to read all this copy. Let's give them photographs of the watches. And we tested the product photos. And again, there were no calls, but I did a heat mapping exercise and saw that people were clicking on the watches, except we hadn't given them anywhere to click to. So, aha, we linked the photographs to his eBay page because at first he didn't want to do that. And I said, look, you got to do this. So we linked the photographs to his eBay page. Again, nobody called but they bought the watches. They clicked through to eBay and bought the watches because it turned out they didn't want to call. They wanted to buy. Um, and I love that moment when you realize, when you look at it and you know that data is behavior and you understand the behavior from the data and you go, this is what they want to do. This is what we're going to do for them. And then I can adjust for that in the strategy that we're doing or the copy that I'm writing. Um, it's always something that I like to use to inform how I'm going to go about communicating better and getting people better results. Um, I like to work with not-for-profits or institutions with budgets out of 100,000 and annual and above, um, and that really need strong results, especially for high ticket items like tuition. I'm Tempo Strategic, accelerate your results. I like it. Sounds like you've been to BNI. Okay. <laughs> 
Is that a good thing or a bad thing? I, I think it's a good thing. <laughs> J- Jason Cement. It's very, it's it's very structured, but why? I mean, it's a great discipline. It's a great place to start, and then you come here. That's how B and I. How's that? I get I get longer. <laughs> Uh, hi, my name is Jason Senment. I'm out in Los Angeles. I have an agency called Get Visible. We have offices here and in Scottsdale, where my partner is. And we do uh, three things. We build websites, either in WordPress or e-commerce sites. Then we get traffic either through search engine channels or social media channels. So we're writing blogs, social media updates, white papers, infographics, and then we're pushing it out to either get you backlinks to grow your rankings, or we're running ad campaigns, either from uh, keyword-based campaigns or targeted uh, based on profiles. And uh, in terms of e-commerce, we also have our own platform, which Michael knows about. And it's somewhere in between Magento on the high end and Shopify on the low end. We're kind of in the middle of those two universes. We've had it for about 15 years and we are literally relaunching this week a five-year upgrade on the platform and uh, happy to talk to you if you guys have clients that are struggling with their uh, e-commerce deployments. So that's my business. And it's great to have Jason out in, uh, in California and the other Jason in Paris. So we're, uh, we're covering a bunch of time zones today. Yeah. Um, so, and we also of course have a Jason. So Jason's all over the world and my middle name is Jason if that makes a difference. Okay. Um, so my name is Michael Bendit. Middle name is Jason. My software, my company is called Software Development Resources. Um, and I am an independent rep for um, software development teams. Um, and what that means is I find them business, build those relationships, and they pay me a commission only when they get paid. Um, so my job is to be sort of the intermediary, finding, matching the, the client with the right team, I represent about 10 teams right now. Um, and uh, it, it's sort of an art form of, of matching that because it, it, there's a bunch of different dimensions, right? There's technology, you know, you have to have a team with the right technology. Um, you have to have a team at the right cost. Um, and so a lot of my work is with what I refer to as dual shore teams. So they've got a couple of people here in the US, but most of their resources are offshore. Um, and so what happens there is that the client gets the benefit of paying, you know, instead of $150 an hour, um, which would be a typical domestic rate, they're paying 40 to $60 an hour in that range. Um, it's not as low as if you went straight to India um, where you could get, you know, programming at $15 an hour, uh, but you sort of get what you pay for. And you also get a, a major headache because you're dealing with a lot of time zone issues and cultural differences. And even though they speak English pretty well, there's definitely some issues that can arise there. Um, I do about half my work in the marketing space, uh, which is one of the reasons I founded this group. Uh, I work very well with digital marketing agencies that sometimes run across uh, a need that they can't satisfy internally because they just run out of resources or it's not a technology they're familiar with. And the other group is we work with startups. Um, a lot of companies come to us through relationships, lawyers, et cetera, um, because they're not really sure how to find a team that's right for them. Um, and you know, my job is to make that match both on the budget side, the, the personality side the, and the technology side. Okay, so we have about 12 minutes left. First of all, did I miss anybody? Um, I think I covered everybody. There were a few people that dro- unfortunately had to drop off. Uh, okay, nobody's raising their hand. Um, so a, a couple things. Um, I will uh, share my screen um, because, oh, Michael. Michael Toadman entered. Um, Michael Toadman is connecting. He just joined the group. Uh, Michael. I'm going to put you on the spot once your video comes up, Michael Toadman, that is. Um, you there? You're on mute still. Okay, Michael, uh, are you ready? You, we, we just finished all the introductions, so you missed everybody else's, but I'll give you the chance to do yours. Um, if you want to do that, you got two minutes. Go ahead. Okay. Very good. Uh, so I recently met Michael through uh, a contact I uh, had uh, met when I moved back to the U.S. 
Uh, I've been living in Europe and Asia for the last uh, 20 years or so, mostly in London and uh, various places in Asia, Hong Kong, Shanghai, and Singapore, working in media and uh, B2B marketing and quite a lot of ad tech and programmatic. Uh, and that's part of the reason why Michael and I decided that uh, there might be some opportunities to collaborate. So very happy to have joined and apologies for making it late today. Had school run and other things to, uh, that got in the way. So uh, uh, at least catching the tail end before my next call. All right, you wanna describe what you do briefly? You got a whole minute more. Okay, uh, so um, at the moment I'm working on, I, I just left a, a retainer, sorry, a, a notice period with Cantor in the spring. Uh, and I've started a retainer with an agency called Velocity, which is a B2B content marketing agency. Uh, they're based in London, but they work with mostly tech companies, quite a lot of them kind of startup businesses, but also uh, larger enterprises like uh, AWS and Slack and Salesforce. Uh, and <clears throat> one of the things we've been talking about is potential partnerships over here, uh, although we've already got about two thirds of our clients from the US. Uh, and then I'm also working with a business called Spark, uh, creative, which isn't a creative agency. It's actually an entertainment business, uh, but they play in the media space because they do branded content and a lot of leadership training and various other things that uh, are uh, kind of within the marketing and, uh, and uh, um, communication space. Wonderful. And uh, uh, Michael uh, was uh, kind enough to offer to provide some feedback to both uh, two of our uh, the companies that we are representing now solo segment and signal insights although because uh his former colleague uh was sick this week we had to postpone it till next week um so uh what i was getting at was we do i just opened up um the slots for um uh upcoming uh meetings i'm going to get to that so trusted referral network it's on the sign up zone Everybody can see that. So Robert did today. Rachel Saunders is doing next week. We are full until um, we have the last week in this, uh, the last week of the year. Actually, December twenty second. We're not doing one on the the following week uh, because it is Christmas week. Um, and then we're starting up again in January. So this is open to anybody who um, has actually attended um, an average of three meetings in the prior three months. So that's a new requirement. So in order to um, present. Uh, you need to attend. Um, this is all about networking. Of course, if you don't attend, it doesn't it doesn't do much good for you. Um, so you can see it's open right through to the end of March. A um, couple other things uh, I will throw at you. Um, we have an upcoming uh, presentation by um, David Alton. That's on Thursday. That's the one that I messed up last time. It's for um, optimizing your LinkedIn profile for um a job search so if you uh, or anybody is also in the job search in addition to being a consultant or whatever um sign up for that um it should have it, the links will have been in my emails but if you uh can't find it uh, let me know and then um rochelle lisner is doing something um she's doing a webinar on the 29th i think at 4 p.m also in my email that came out and that is on honing your pitch um, so it's going to be interactive. We're going to uh, call on five volunteers to, to give their pitch. And um, uh, we're going to take feedback, sort of polling feedback, uh, anonymous from the other members who attend. Uh, and then she's going to critique one of them. Um, uh, what else is going on? I'm, I'm talking to um, a, a third company. Um, I will bring up their website right now, actually. Um, it's a company called uh, Brand Maker. Uh, very interesting product. If I could find it here, Brand. It's a marketing resource management tool. Uh, they are a German-based company. Um, they have uh, one salesman here in the U.S. Uh, they've, they're about a $20 million company. They do very well with large brands um, that need to better manage their entire marketing process. Um, so there, a marketing resource management tool is similar to an ERP for the enterprise. This is for marketing. Um, their sweet spot in sales um, or is about three hundred to five hundred thousand dollars a year. So clearly, it's for larger companies. Um, and I would say their key differentiator, one of their key differentiators, is the fact that they cover 
so much territory in the marketing operations space, uh, including planning and budgeting, workflow, and then asset management as well, or, or digital asset management. Um, so uh, they're actually doing a, uh, a, 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 I guess a webinar, sort of a co user conference that's going on right now. I'm gonna jump into that, uh, learn more about it, still negotiating um, what our cut will be. Um, it will likely be lower than you know, what we're getting, um, it'll likely be lower than the 15% because they're, they're, the size is so big, um, but it's also a, a harder sell obviously. So um, doing the best to negotiate a reasonable, uh, a reasonable um, referral fee that we can all benefit from. Um, and uh, Brian, I think Brian Rudolph, I think uh, you might be somebody that uh, has some potential leads for them. You and I should talk. Obviously, we don't have a deal yet, but um, uh, might be interesting to discuss. Yeah, absolutely. Wonderful. So we blow that offline. Um, take advantage of all the connections you've met here, um, and uh, you know, please. I'm going to go to gallery view. Uh, please reach out one-on-one -on -one 